Good day, everyone. And I'm very much privileged to be part of today's webinar on Unveiling Women's Roles in Circular Economy Adoption and Tourism Growth, organized by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies. My name is Ovito Sepikatigbach, and on behalf of Ms. Jemima Joanne Villaruel, I'm here to share with you the findings of our study entitled Assessing the Adoption of Circular Economy among women-led MSMEs or micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises in Metro Manila, a pilot study. This was funded by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies through the Philippine APEC Studies Center Network. Uh, it was conducted in 2023, and I'm very much excited to share with everyone today primary findings which might be useful for our policymakers as well as our women-led MSMEs. This is the outline of my presentation for today. A little bit of introduction about the objectives of our study, the research questions that drove us to do this study, and then I'm going to jump onto the relevant literature, background discussion on the concept of circular economy, benefits of circular economy, the drivers and the barriers to circular economy adoption, policy and legal frameworks in the Philippines, and cases and evidence regarding circular economy adoption. Of course, it's important also for me to talk about, uh, albeit briefly, okay, the conceptual framework of the study as well as the methodology. And the fifth part will then focus on the results and our analysis on the data that we have gathered using survey questionnaire involving a certain, a specific number of women-led MSMEs. And of course, you have to highlight what are the policy options and considerations for Philippine government, specifically concerned government agencies. So as a bit of an introduction, I think the primary point that I want to make is that circular economy is a concept that has been there, that has been floated around since the late 19, 90s? No, sorry, since, since the late 1900s, okay? 1970s, 1980s, circular economy is, a, is an approach that has been promoted, okay? But it has yet to pick up steam, and only recently that we see momentum across different circles at the national, regional, and global level. As a matter of fact, at the regional level, no? uh, when we look at the APEC initiatives or the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum initiatives, we see that there's a recognition that circular economy is the way to go. And this is being mainstream, specifically in the context of sustainable development. Because the primary objective of the circular economy is to promote sustainable consumption and production. Okay? Globally, this is mainly linked with the SDG 2030, uh, specifically the goal of promoting sustainable consumption and production. There were several frameworks and documents that were already launched in APEC that try to somehow promote okay, circular economy adoption among economies. Uh, more recently, when Bangkok, sorry, when Thailand became the host of APEC, it tried to advance no? the Bangkok goals on biocircular green economy, which is which embodies the similar objectives, principles, and approaches, mainly linked with the circular economy. Okay. Much closer to home, to home, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations have already came up with the Framework for Circular Economy for the ASEAN Economic Community, and they have launched a platform, specifically the Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform, to bring together different actors or relevant stakeholders and discuss, identify ways forward in promoting circular economy. As of the moment, they are developing a work program to support the implementation of the framework. Okay? At the local level, Circular economy is something that the current administration, meaning the Marcus Jr. administration, is attempting to mainstream okay, 
mainly because Philippine or the Philippines produces at least 61,000 million metric tons of waste daily, eh? on a daily basis with plastic waste comprising around 24% of that figure. Okay? Of the 24% plastic wastes that we produce every day, only 28% are recycled. While the remaining percentages or the remaining plastic wastes are discarded to landfills or to seas, not to other open areas, which are detrimental not only to our health, but also have negative impacts on food security and other socio-cultural or socio-economic aspects of our daily lives. No? Now, if you look at the economic structure of the Philippines, majority of the businesses are micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. As a matter of fact, they comprise 99.5% of all businesses in the Philippines, which means that if you want to really address a the mitigation of plastic waste, you need to substantially involve or secure the buy-in and participation of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. If you look closer, uh, it's not surprising because you will see that around 60% of business and registrations, new and renewal, in the 2019 detailed list of establishments reflect that they are business I'm sorry, women-owned or women-run enterprises, which means to say, which means, sorry, that we have seen a trend of increasing participation from women regarding businesses. Now, when you combine them all together, it basically led us to create or draft this question, no? which is, how has women-led MSMEs in Metro Manila adopted circular economy into their operations and practices. The specific questions that we tried to answer was, of course, number one, what is circular economy? There have been, there have been various definitions of circular economy, but in the Philippine context, we have identified our own in one of the pending bills okay, in our Congress. And then we proceed to the next question, sub-question, which is what are the related laws policies and frameworks in the Philippines. And this is important because it can help us gauge you know, where we're at, what are we doing, and who drives the agenda and the momentum towards circular economy adoption. Of course, uh, the main contribution of this study is coming up with or identifying themes, experiences of women-led MSMEs in adopting circular economy. Another important contribution of the study is, of course, identifying what are the policy options and recommendations that the Philippine government may consider in further advancing circular economy adoption among women-led MSMEs in Metro Manila and hopefully nationwide. If you look at the objectives, this basically uh, mirror okay, our research questions. Let us now proceed to the concept of circular economy. Circular economy is, as I mentioned, is something that was not invented in the 21st century. No? It, it, it was something of, uh, it was born of the idea that the earth is basically a closed economic system. Meaning, whatever we do economically, we cannot separate it from processes of biological processes. Okay? We should treat it as related or linked to processes of earth or earth-related processes, which means that whatever we use, whatever we uh, generate, you know, whatever waste we generate may be used as inputs Okay, into another cycle of production. And that is where circular economy becomes relevant. Because circular economy, according to Sahel, no, is a spiral loop system that tries to, or that attempts to minimize matter, energy flow, and environmental deterioration without restricting economic growth or social and technical progress. So basically, it echoes the principles of sustainable 
development, but the focus is on reuse, repair, reconditioning, and recycling of products, goods, or commodities. Okay. If you look at the policy and legal landscape, there's actually a lot of projects, programs, policies, and activities that we are doing or we have done no, in, in the Philippine context. But in terms of the overarching framework, we have the Philippine Action Plan for Sustainable Consumption Production, and this is overseen by NEDA. This is anchored on our Ambition 1940. No? And uh, the goal is to entice more Filipinos to produce and consume green goods and services to accelerate the shift towards sustainable and climate smart practices and lifestyles. Okay? Uh, it, has, it also identified four action notes, specifically policy and regulation, research and development, innovation and technology, infrastructure, promotion, and education. When you read our study, no, I hope you have the time. We have actually grouped you know, the different initiatives in at least uh, six, okay? six uh, categories. We, we call them policy intervention you know, areas. And it's encouraging because when we did a scan, you no, know, uh, uh, an environmental scan of the different uh, initiatives relating to circular economy, in the Philippines, it's not something that is within the scope of the government. As a matter of fact, civil society organizations, private sector, no, and even development partners have participated in the promotion of CE. Okay, this is the conceptual framework of our study, but I'll I'll skip this because. Uh, in the interest of time, and you can review this in our uh, in our uh, paper that is accessible online. No methodologies we we employ the mixed methods approach. We gather data from women at the MSMEs. We ask them several questions, and mainly we disseminated the forms uh, through both online and offline means. But we receive mainly online uh, responses through Google Forms. We share the call for interested participants to our network partners, okay? And the questionnaire was administered from August 15 to October 1, 2023, okay? The questionnaire was mainly based on the Circular Maturity Firm Level Assessment Tool developed by SACO and others. It has a lot of questions, okay? But since the focus of our study is only about the level of circular economy adoption among women at MSMEs, we only selected around 78 items, no? and these are categorized into 11 major sections. Now, let's, let's go on to the uh, results and analysis. No? The profile of our respondents, uh, we, 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 we were able to interview or at least survey majority micro enterprises no as a matter of fact 93.1 percent comprised the the survey while the remaining 3.4 percent are small and medium firms uh, and they were identified according to the psa definition no? majority of them are very young 18 to 35 and around 81 percent are highly educated who possess baccalaureate or postgraduate degrees while the remaining 19 percent of primary, secondary, or vocational diplomas. The main uh, products or services of the respondents are related to food, okay, clothing. Uh, and it's interesting because we see that a lot of the respondents or some of the respondents are into selling of put photo cards, no, K-pop items, merch, albums. Top locations are from Manila City, Quezon City, Caloocan, Makati, and Taguig. Eh, we're not able to get any respondent from several cities, no? San Juan City, Navota City, Patero City, and Valenzuela City. Majority of the firms cater to 
directly to consumers while the remaining 12.1% 12 12 12 transact with other businesses. Okay? Of the target, at least 200 participants, only 58 responded. And this was the best that we can do. As a matter of fact, we, we, we extended the deadline for them to give the responses. Okay? Now, the first, the, the second category that, that we, we focus our question on is about their awareness of C principles. And this is important because uh, through our study, we found that majority, you know, at least 32.8%, okay, have never heard of circular economy before. They have no idea of what it is and they have no intent of knowing what it is. 36.2% okay? have said that you know, we have a bit basic understanding, but we would like to learn more. Okay, we'd like to learn more. However, no, 22.4% said that I've heard of it being thrown around, but, but I don't really understand it. No? I don't have, I, I don't uh, really understand it. Only around 9% have the ability to explain it in detail, no, and possibly share it with their other, with, with, with their, their colleagues. When we asked them about their challenges in terms of uh, circular economy adoption, the, the answers reflect the existing literature. No? In, 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 the, in this case, in uh, women-led MSMEs in Metro Manila, the primary challenge to circular economy adoption is their lack of knowledge and awareness, limited financial resources, and the lack of government support and policies. No? There's also lack of access to relevant networks and partnerships. There's two you know, firms that said that it's mainly the resistance so, to change within the organization. So the traditional mindset of, of, of the leaders or business owners. Okay? Internally, you know, just to add on to the discussion, 70.7% confirmed that they have not conducted any assessment or evaluation to identify potential application of circular economy while 10.3% uh, intend to undertake an assessment soon. Okay? Only 5.2% regularly observe such practice. And the, the analysis is that this is mainly shaped by the low level of familiarity concerning the potential benefits of circular economy adoption. Okay? When we ask them, what about Customer consumer demand. No, forty-four point eight percent said there's no demand, so we don't need to adopt it. Okay, while only five point two percent share that there's high demand for circular products and processes. When we ask them about their familiarity with benefits of circular economy, thirty-nine point seven percent said we're not familiar at all about the, the gains to be reaped from adopting circular economy, while Equally, no, 25.9% said we're somewhat familiar, but we're really uncertain of the benefits for my business. While the other side would say we're familiar, but I need more guidance no, to identify specific benefits. Regarding government programs, okay, 65.5% shared that they're not aware of any government initiatives related to circular economy. And we're not saying that there are no programs. There are several programs. There's actually, I think, a lot of programs, but the level of awareness is very low. And this is a key point in terms of our policy recommendation or policy option. No, 32.8% uh, said, I have heard it, no, but I don't really have detailed knowledge. Okay. Uh, when we asked them, have you received any government support? 43.1% said, I haven't received any government support. And 27.6% said, government guidance is poor. Okay? No respondent characterized government support as excellent. In terms of the level of circularity you know, or the actual adoption of circular economy uh, principles and practices, 39.7% said, the, the, the principles related to circular economy doesn't actually align with their business strategy and vision. 
And this is important because if there's misalignment or lack of alignment no, between business strategy and circular economy principles, then there's less reason or motivation for businesses to adopt it. Because as I mentioned, no, there's, association, there's associated costs to the transition. Okay? 31.31% said there's limited alignment, while 24.1% there's some alignment, but there's room for improvement. Okay? This lack of alignment basically results in the absence of circular economy components and the strategy of many firms, as well as the absence of knowledge sharing platforms and activities between and across firms. Okay? Again, another question that we asked them is that how important is C adoption for your business sustainability and success? Okay, 44.8% said it is important, but other priorities may take precedence. Okay, 31% said it is somewhat important, but not a high priority. While 13.8% said it is extremely important and it is a top priority for business strategy. And the remaining 10%, it is not important and this is not, does not align with business goals. I think the positive thing that we can take from it is that they recognize that it is important, no? but it's a matter of how do we put them at the top no, of the priority list. Okay. Next, uh, in terms of the post sale services no, related to circular economy. 60.3% said it's not applicable, mainly because their products or goods may not need maintenance no? or may not need post-sale services. Results are also discouraging no? in resource recovery, meaning when you talk about liquid, solid, and uh, gaseous waste that should be recovered. No? And 92.3% of the respondents directly dispose their liquid uh, waste, 90.4% discard their gaseous waste, and 75.8% dispose their solid waste. Meaning, majority of the wastes are not put back into the production cycle, which means it's a linear approach. It's not a circular approach. Just to add, no, just to add, and I'm nearing the, the end of the presentation, an overwhelming number of MSMEs, women-led MSMEs, do not use renewable energy sources, and a much higher number of firms implement material consumption, material consumption management strategies. Around 69.3% is somewhat aware with local recycling and waste management facilities. Okay? And Majority of the women-led MSMEs that we surveyed, specifically 67.2%, have little to no knowledge, experience, or application of eco-design, circular design practices. As I mentioned, existing literature have shared or have, have uh, posited that if you really want businesses to adopt eco-design, it should come from consumer demand. It should be driven by consumers and there's less of it in the philippine context okay 91.4 percent also revealed that they are neither familiar nor have patents related to circular economy okay another category of our survey uh, pertain to partnerships and collaborations okay and when we asked them majority said no 87.3 percent we're not involved in any industrial cluster. Okay, 9.1% said we're not familiar. And the remaining, yes, we're part. No, but it's very, very, that's a very small number. Okay, majority are also not active in collaborating with external partners because they claim that companies still operate in silos. Okay, now to conclude our presentation. We have seen that there's a lot of existing initiatives, okay, but they tend to be piecemeal, ad hoc, reactive to the flavor of the times. The 
current pronouncement of uh, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. himself in, in uh, during his 2023 State of the Nation address raises optimism that we're nearing or we're, we're nearing the, the possible formulation and adoption of a circular economy national framework. Because even the Philippine Development Plan cites a promotion of circular economy as essential in achieving improved environmental quality uh, under the strategy framework to establish livable communities. Now, of course, the DNR and NEDA will play important roles, but the private sector, external partners, and civil society organizations should also contribute to mainstreaming circular economy to their various policy interventions. Nevertheless, our study found that there is still low level of awareness regarding circular economy principles among women-led MSMEs in Metro Manila. This low level of awareness translates to low level of circularity uh, across various areas, which I just discussed uh, a while ago. MSMEs, women-led MSMEs to be specific, also tend to work in isolation and shun collaboration and partnerships. And this is not helpful because if you want to resolve economic issues or concerns regarding the lack of economic profitability or the market profitability of circular economy adoption, then you must promote industrial clusters because you can share resources, you can share practices, and you can share gains or benefits. No? Of course, the Philippine government will play the leading role a emphasis on the leading role in the pursuit of sustainable trade en route to the successful attainment of objectives at the national, regional, and international levels. Hence, no, the government may consider the following policy recommendations. And we have identified three simultaneous policy actions at the micro, meso, and macro levels. At the micro level, since we see that there is low level of awareness, no, DNR and DTI can focus on education campaigns and advocacies to raise the current level of awareness about CE principles. There are all already existing programs A, for WMSMEs by private sector, by development partners, and they may build on it. A, they may build on it. The PTTC or the Philippine Trade Training Center uh may be tasked to develop courses or modules on CEs intended for women-led MSMEs. In order to encourage you know, business women-led businesses to uptake or to, to adopt circular economy, incentives and business support schemes may be provided. Okay. Another way is for the DNR or the or DOST to issue awards and certifications recognizing sustainable business practices to at least you know entice or solicit or elicit or elicit greater adoption among MSMEs and of course you have social media platforms you have digital technologies you no know, you may use this to increase awareness among the public you no know, wider MSMEs and even the informal sector now at the meso level okay we are advocating for the incorporation of a smart regulation approach. When you say smart regulation, the idea is that the government should conduct regular check-ins no, or consultations with businesses, commercial or non-commercial third parties, and other relevant stakeholders. Regulations should also be less burdensome because this is one of the primary barriers actually to circular economy adoption. Okay. There's also existing models which may be used as foundations for expansion. So for example, you have the Eco Town Scale Up Project, the Zero Waste to Nature um, Ambition by by uh, by, uh, by by Parms, if I'm not mistaken, and the Eco Brick Eco Brick Projects. Uh, these may serve as models, no, in promoting partnerships and collaborations. And this may also be used as, as I mentioned, foundations for the creation or the establishment of eco-parks okay, to facilitate sharing of 
related facility, CE related facilities, technologies, and technical know how between and among uh, MSMEs, so wider MSMEs. Now, in terms of micro, no, at the, the city, local, and national level, it is important to come up with a national framework on circular economy to harmonize existing dispersed initiatives and programs. No? Several bills have already been filed, and it is our hope that sooner than later, we're going to see the implementation of an act promoting or at least mandating the creation of a circular economy framework. No? Why? Because if you have this, then it may effectively group related initiatives and promote better coordination between and among actors. Okay? It is also crucial for the government to determine what is the most beneficial time frame for a national plan. Is it five years? Is it six years? Ten years? No. This is important because circular economy is something that is not static. This is dynamic, meaning it changes depending on the different factors, domestic or external environment. Hence, you need to have a strategy that is agile no? and can account for, as I mentioned, the different unforeseen changes. Okay? And the last is, of course, if you really want to know or accurately identify where we're at, then you need to have an effective monitoring framework. And if you want to have an effective monitoring framework, you need to identify what are the specific indicators to measure. So what are you looking at? So this is where the proposed nat national natural capital accounting or environment and national resource accounting assessment plan may play vital roles. Okay? You cannot measure, sorry, you cannot make or come up with policies based on unsound data. You cannot intervene what you cannot measure. Okay? And so just to wrap up my, my presentation, I know I'm over time, no? But in, in the spirit of uh, Women's Month, no, I think the, the, the final point that I'd like to make is that it's not enough to give women a seat at the table. No? You have to give them a platform to speak. You have to listen to them. And you have to recognize or acknowledge that women are not an, are not an homogeneous group. No? Women led MSMEs for that matter are not the same. When you come up with policies, they should be tailor-made. Because as much as we want to promote women's development, across all levels of society or across all industries, we have to keep in mind that they have different challenges, they have different conditions. And so the, the very basic, the very basic uh, exercise that we as government agencies or civil service must do is listen to our constituents or listen to our target audience. In this case, it's women-led MSMEs. And with that, I'd like to thank you for, for taking the time to listen.